All right, we left off on metaphase. So we're going to pick up at anaphase. In the Q column, you're going to write anaphase. So far, we know that in mitosis, prophase, the chromatins have condensed two chromosomes. They've gathered together. The spindle fibers started connecting. The centrioles started moving. Metaphase, the chromosomes gathered in the middle. Metaphase middle, that's an easy way to remember it, right? The spindle fibers are fully connected between the centrioles and the chromosomes, and they're, re they're ready. We see the full picture of centrioles at the poles, chromosomes in the middle, spindle fibers connecting the two, okay? So then now in anaphase. Anaphase is the third stage of mitosis. Yeah? I got the wrong Sure. Do whatever. Anaphase is the third stage of mitosis. Those chromosomes start to pull apart now. The sister chromatids are separated away from each other, so we have fully formed chromosomes pulling apart <coughs> by the spindle fibers. They're moving towards the poles. The centrioles are controlling it like our marionette puppet, right? And they're pulling the chromosomes. The cell elongates, but it's going to take the shape of a rugby ball. So those spindle fibers can control all the movement of those chromosomes and just pull. We see distinct space between our chromosomes. Okay? We've got two generated pictures here. We see the distinct space here and here. We see the spindle fibers connecting between the centrioles and the chromosomes. And if we look at this uh, fluorescent image that's been taken, you can see the chromosomes here pulled apart. You can see the spindle fibers connecting it and the centrioles at the poles. It looks more oblong than circular. Why does the cell get longer during anaphase? Anna. Yeah, so they can, the chromatids can move away from each other. So they have room to move. Either one, but you need to have cytokinesis written there. Okay? So it's telophase in the Q column and add cytokinesis either in the Q column or in the body notes. But you need to have cytokinesis. Because depending on who you talk to, these can be two separate phases or they're the same phase. Telekinesis, for our purposes, is going to be the last phase. During this phase, the chromosomes have fully separated away from each other. They are 
completely apart. They've started to unwind. They're going back to chromatin. They want to be loosey-goosey. They don't want to have structure anymore. The nuclear envelopes are starting to reappear to provide that structure again. The spindle fibers are starting to go. They've gone away. They don't have a job anymore. And we start to see the cell separate. This is the cytokinesis. The cytoplasm is starting to divide. We have this cleavage furrow form. That's what this division here begins. That gives it that figure eight shape. So then each side will essentially gain its own nucleus. Once cytokinesis is complete, then mitosis is complete and we have two daughter cells. What's cytokinesis? Last phase, what's actually happening? Cytokinesis, yeah? The cell divides into two daughter cells. It's where the, the cytoplasm separates. Cyto, cytoplasm, cytokinesis. our diagram, you can see all the parts here and how they've separated and reverted back. In our fluorescent scan over here, though, we can see that last remaining bit of cytoplasm still waiting to separate before we have two fully formed daughter cells. Remember, you have access to this on the slide deck, okay? When you finish this, I want you to go back in your notes to where we wrote out four, stage, four basic stages. Okay, in your body notes, we literally wrote those words, four basic stages. Okay, and then we wrote out the list, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Okay, so wherever you found that in your body notes, now somewhere big, in all capital letters, across the whole note, in your Q column, wherever it helps you, I want you to write PMAT, P-M-A-T. It's a mnemonic to help you remember the order of mitosis, Wait, PMAT. Right, right where we wrote four basic stages. Yeah, where you wrote in your notes, in the body notes, four basic stages. And then we have the list, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And somewhere across there, you're just going to write PMAT. Okay? Nice and big and large in all caps. Like I put it somewhere where I had the blank space near it and just 
big letters, fold across, highlighting it. So I remember, like, this is how I can remember the, st the stages in order. Okay? Mm -hmm. How about you swing by the office? After you wrote that, go to the cutout from yesterday. The first cutout we glued in yesterday. Okay? And what we're going to do on the flap on top, if you didn't put them one on top of the other, just pick one of them. Okay? Put the one on top. We're going to draw what each stage looks like in mitosis. If you're following along in your Chromebook, you can click on this outside blue ring and you can rotate it to match the phase with the depiction. If you're not following along, you're just going to have to suffer with me up here because I'm not rotating it. Okay? All right. So, what's the first phase in your cutout? What? Pro phase? Uh, we're going to get to it. So prophase is our first one, right? So then which of these depictions shows us prophase? I'll, I'll act like a wheel telling you to stop. Presley says stop. Do you agree with Presley? Do I need to keep going? Keep going. Aiden says keep going. Who agrees with Presley? Who agrees with Aiden? Got some who agree with Aiden. Who agreed with Presley? Yeah. Anna agrees with Presley? Yeah. Okay. Tell me why you think that's pro phase. Okay. And then the next one, the front, um, if you're monophase, it's like the same thing for staying at the stomatitis, which is what happens after that one. Alright. Aiden, why do you think I need to move on? I just have a feeling. That you, you have a feeling? That you can move on. So no evidence, just a Not feeling? Yet. Anna says stop. Do you agree with Anna? 
that metaphase? And it says stop here. Is this one metaphase? Tell me why. So we have the chromosomes all lined up. Okay, what else? So we have the spindle fibers connecting. What are the spindle fibers connecting to? The chromosomes and? And the centrosome, which is where the centrioles are, right? So yeah. Good way to remember it. Metaphase means middle. Oh, is that metaphase, not metaphase? Yep, metaphase middle. All the chromosomes are lined up in the middle. Metaphase middle. So where are we going to go next? Or again, let's draw it on your cutout where it says metaphase. Use colored pencils if you need to. Label the pieces if you need to. Definitely draw it large enough so you can see what you need to see. What's next? Anaphase. Anaphase. Stop. Stop. Kate says stop here. Is that where we stop or do we need to keep going? Stop. Stop? Why do we say this one's anaphase? So they're split in half. We have space in the middle. Yeah. What else makes this anaphase? Aiden? Uh, because prophase is right there, right down there, and then metaphase is right there, so I'm guessing. Because these are already in order here? Yeah. And so that makes it, it the it's next? Going forward, so yeah. And what? And it, and on the uh, direction on the arrows, it says going forward. Okay. Okay, you got another reason? Spindle fibers are still connected? Yeah. Okay. I can go with all, all the reasons there. Kate used evidence, Aiden used logic. So what's our last phase in mitosis? Telophase. Which one's that? Big one? Big one? With the two nuclei. The figure eight with the two nuclei. Do we have fully formed nuclei over here? Yes? Compare the nuclei here to here. Is that oh, two wait, no, no. nuclei? No. no. But we know it's nuclei. Why? Because the it holds the chromosomes. Because they're holding the chromosomes, right? What else is being depicted but not holding the chromosomes? Cytoplasm? Yeah. It's kind of stuck in the circle and the data is in the loop. So yeah. So we still have the cytoplasm here. But what else is. Yeah, the spindle fibers are disappearing. We have one last flap on your cutouts. What's it? Interface. Interface. We've got one last depiction here. This one? Yeah. yeah. What's different about this one compared to all the rest of them? It's the last one. It's the last one. What else? Also the lining. Presley? We need to determine where the spindle fibers are going. There's no spindle fibers. We have a fully formed nucleus. TJ? I don't know. No, you said something. That's what I was going to say. That's not what I heard. I know. I don't know about that. Come on. No, no, say what you're going to say. <coughs>
Chromosomes are unwound, making this chromatin. Yeah, we have chromatin just hanging out. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I'm question. Yeah. Is that the first phase or is that the last phase? Your cutouts show interface at the last phase. The interface is in between. That inter means in between, like intermission. In a, in a play, it, it's in between. So it can be listed before, it can be listed after. In between, the play is what tell us when we split into two, and that can either be the last phase, or do they just stack the bones up? So when telophase is the last phase, and cytokinesis is complete, and now we have two daughter cells, interphase occurs in each of those daughter cells to prep to start the process all over again. Now does that make sense? So then it could be at the beginning because it's prepping to start all over again or it's interface this is the new daughter cell is the end. Right? It's in between. All right, now you have those drawn, you're going to flip up the flaps. The bottom flap is where you write the information. Hey, I've got at least one bit of information here for you. Let's see where they go. Which phase has chromosomes line up in the middle? Metaphase. Metaphase middle. So under metaphase, chromosomes <coughs> line up in the middle. Uh, chromosomes line up in the middle. <coughs> so you're going to flip up your flap that you just drew on, and on the next flap, you're going to find the metaphase, and you're going to write a bit of information. I've got one bit of information here. Mary said this one was what, DJ? Metaphase. So now, which phase has the cell dividing into two daughter cells? Telophase. So on the telophase flap, the cell divides into two daughter cells. Chromosomes move toward the poles. Do you agree with Kate? She said anaphase. Chromosomes move toward the poles. Start at the end. Kate said anaphase. Do you agree with her? Do you disagree? All right. So on your anaphase flap, Chromosomes move toward the poles. And lastly, when do the chromosomes condense? Jackson? Okay. All right. There you got at least one bit of information per section. Two per section for the minimum point. All right. Three D mitosis. 3D mitosis.
mitosis was named by a German scientist in 1882. I don't know what the scientist's name was. Don't ask me. Okay. It was. It comes from the Greek word mitos, means string. Why do you think he chose mitos as the inspiration for mitosis? So to string the DNA. The thread-like structure. What are the thread-like structures? Mm -hmm. Chromosomes. Oh, what is it in the 3D mitosis? Is it just the chromosomes that have thread-like structures? Could that be the only thing that gives us the idea of string? What else? What else is happening during mitosis? What else do we see? Little things growing. The spindle fibers. Spindle fibers could also be it. What else? When they're not chromosomes, they're what? Which one's packed? Which one's not? Mm hmm. Yeah, but what's the name of that DNA? So the chromosomes are what, packed or loose? Packed. Packed. So what's the what about when they're loose? Whenever they're loose, they're called chromatin. Chromatin. Do they look stringy? Yeah, chromatin stringy. Long and stringy. Remember my quiz for yesterday? What about that uh, little, that thing that looks like a fiber, kind of has like strings in it, isn't it? Uh, spindle fibers? Spindle fibers? Yeah. Haley already said that. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And mom's spindle fibers. Spindle fibers. Yeah. The chromatin. Yeah. So we've got chromatin, spindle fibers, chromosomes. Do we have any others that make sense for string? I mean, this sounds good to me. Make sure you're writing in full and complete thoughts, full and complete sentences. You got another? Uh, I have his name. His name was uh, Walter Fleming. Okay. Oh, Fleming. That makes sense. Okay. Does it make sense? Uh, Fleming was a biologist who worked. Uh, yeah. He does a lot of DNA work. Common in our bodies. 
Somatic cells or germ cells? Somatic. Somatic. How we get sperm and ova for sexual reproduction. Meiosis is a type of cell division that reduces the number of chromosomes by half. Results in four gamete cells required to produce sperm and ova for sexual reproduction. Vocab. We have more vocab. Always have more vocab. Okay. Bless you. Homologous chromosomes. 
Say that with me. Homologous. Homologous. I have not heard this side of the room. Homologous. Still have not heard this side of the room. Homologous. Okay. Homologous chromosomes. We know from homozygous that this is going to mean same, right? Homologous. So homologous chromosomes where paternal and maternal, so mother and father, chromosomes are matching sex. They have to pair up. So when you get one set of chromosomes from the mother, one set of chromosomes from the father, that means those chromosomes are the exact same from each of them. They're going to be genetically coded differently, but this chromosome has all the traits for, for all the genetic code for these particular traits on it. Same from the other parent. So those chromosomes have to find each other and pair up. When they pair up, that's how we get our homologous chromosomes. The chromosomes have to find their match. <coughs> then crossover happens. Crossover is when homologous chromosomes exchange DNA or exchange genetic information. Crossover. Homologous chromosomes exchange genetic material. Lastly, haploid cells. Like with diploid, that DI means two. Haploid, HA means four. So, haploid is four cells that result from crossover. They're going to be Genet genetically different from each other and from the parent. Remember, don't write word for word. Find the important pieces. Yes? What, what brings in the cells from the other chromosomes? What uses meiosis? Yeah. Germ cells. Just germ cells or nothing else? Yep, just germ cells. What? All other cells use mycosis. All right. Okay, you don't have to write anything here because we've written this already, right? If they're meiosis, there are two sets. Meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. This is just a picture of those stages. Okay? We're going to get into those pictures. So now is where I want you to write. In the Q column, you're going to write meiosis 1, and then under it, prophase 1. Okay? During meiosis 1, Everything looks basically the same as mitosis with very subtle differences. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So let's look at what's the same. In prophase one, what we see is we've got our centriole still, we've got our spindle fibers still, and they're connected. The centrioles are starting to move apart. The nuclear envelope is starting to dissolve. 
It's all the same, right? Here's where it's different. In mitosis, during prophase, we had duplicate chromosomes. They were genetically identical, correct? In prophase one, during meiosis, now we have homologous chromosomes. Yeah, they, they're the same, but they're, they've matched up from mother and father. Okay? So now we don't have, they're not duplicate, they're not identical. Okay? We have homologous chromosomes. That's what we're going to find here in the nucleus, the homologous chromosomes. We see crossover occurring. <coughs> we see the chromosomes under the microscope. Spindle fibers are forming. The centrioles are starting to move. Nuclear envelope disappears. The homologous chromosomes are starting to pair up, line up with each other, and cross over. What's the role of spindle fibers? Controls the movement and the separation of the chromosomes. Controls the chromosomes. All right. You're still under the same Q column. But now we're going to talk crossover and dig in a little bit deeper. Because what's crossover? We defined it, but does it make sense? No, not exactly. Okay, sort of, kind of, but eh. So we know crossover is part of prophase one. We know that our chromosomes are swapping out genetic material. The result is going to be genetic diversity. Okay, we can write all this, but do we still understand it? To me, this picture helps explain it a whole lot better than all the words that we've written about chromosomes or about crossovers. So again, crossover happens in prophase one. Chromosomes swap out genetic information with each other, and it results in genetic diversity. <coughs> so then what is actually happening? We've got our homologous chromosomes, right? One, two, are paired up with each other. Okay? Then they actually have to cross over. Like literally cross over. And they exchange a gene. So here, I'm going to give you a gene, I'm going to give you a gene. And then we get our differences here. Now we've, it's called recombinant chromosomes. You don't need to remember that. We just remember four gametes. Do each of these look the same? No. No. These look the same though, right? Mm -hmm. Do these look the same? Mm -hmm. No. Genetic diversity. purposes to make it easier to understand. Now, see we have A, B, C listed here, so like A gene, B gene, C gene. 
each one of these could could be exchanged. We just did one to make that visible. So then you can write this down for extra, but we're just going to go over it. Okay? So then tell, these are your answer choices here. What's this? homologous pair, which makes this crossing over. See, literal cross. Alright. We can keep going, or we can stop, because this is where all the other classes stop. Alright. We're going to stop there for today, then.